before '94, I felt I had the rationale to to invade people's spaces, to photograph because basically we, I was trying to show what life is like on the apartheid. Then after '94, and then basically when Codesa was happening, we exceeded to market economy, market forces, and capitalism. And today, America, if I say people are poor and capitalism is bad, there's no point for me because what is the alternative? hopeless as a photojournalist because mm. I don't drive, I never keep deadlines and therefore I had to think differently. I'd photograph in places where I'd normally go instead of looking, looking at Afrikaners for instance and say look how ugly these people are or whatever. It was more inward looking. More like a metaphorical biography, like a fictional biography. Life on the farms was going on quietly. And townships, and town, especially colored townships, they were not the focal point of the news. They were not the story at the time. The title of the show was Like Shifting Sand. And it, I'm looking at farm laborers, I'm looking at colored communities, I'm looking at life in the township, looking at places where, especially TV crews, they don't go there. What I like about this image, this is so right? And then we are trying to show domestic workers in the township. This is the madam, and she's giving instructions, as you can see. But it's her eyes and her, her position in the image, which makes the difference between them. Many food photojournalists. You go into a situation and you photograph it and then you get out. I was making pictures of people I have to live with, which makes a difference. If I say you're poor and then I show photographs of you looking poor, I mean, people wouldn't be happy because this is not how they see themselves or they see their own lives. If you look at um, journalism, America, speaking of Soweto, you describe Soweto as gloomy. You describe it in the what? In language just focuses on what is lacking. America, you don't recognize what is there. And it was while working on, these, on this project that I realized that there were some Im images which were not talking to me. Some very old images. Sometimes you find them framed or you find them between sheets in the photo album. And it's when I begin to investigate these images that I realize my ignorance about our history. You go to the South African library, if there are any images of black people, they are under categories like uh, Christian weddings. Never, never images of people standing proudly of families. The idea for the project was to excavate these images and insert them within what is known. Okay. After I came back from ICP, 
do I go through a kind of hiatus? For four, four years, I could not make pictures. So I, I begin chasing shadows, looking at the caves and looking at spirituality as a kind of way of trying to answer the question, why did apartheid take so long? I was looking at spirituality, uh, which is a kind of crutch that helped people they cope with apartheid. And change becomes very big. Maybe something that made it possible for apartheid to continue for so long. Because they said, okay, white man is invincible, but basically, maybe I'm going to, after, after death, I'm going to, he'll get his comeuppance. I can't say I developed that language consciously. Even a flashlight, I mean, it's an imposition. If you are going to document something and you bring in your own light, we are actually disturbing the truth. And therefore, working, working in the caves, it's inevitable if you're not using flesh that you're going to get movement in your images or the illusion of movement. You find yourself in the caves and I don't know whether the influence is biblical where you have smoke, you have fire and then there's water and all those things they merge in the image and what I was trying to do is to try and grapple or play around with this idea of spirit, spirituality, and and as you can see, that's impossible. You can't see, can't see spirit. Hence the title, Chasing Shadows. I was saying, in the past, I'm basically, in the past, until 1994, I foregrounded social issues. And now, I'm good, after 94, I'm what I do, I look at landscape and not looking at social issues, but the work is still political. When, I f when the picture looks very nice, oh my God, and then you find that the writing is very disconcerting. Okay. You have the first impression to say, this is a beautiful photograph, it's a nice landscape. And I try not to, not to look too much at the aesthetics of the image, oh my God, basically. I look at the picture as a kind of, as a beginning to have debates around these issues. And if, uh, it's not the picture, it's the story oh my God, that goes, the text that goes with the picture. A photograph is an infidel. To fix meaning on a photograph, oh my God, it's really very hard. Oh my God. You can domesticate meaning by putting a catch, but generally, okay, it depends who, 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 in whose hands the photograph is. Mm -hmm. 